we'll look at Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, for the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they ha not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made uh, of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Therefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin, thou wouldest not, then said, said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. As opposed to all those many sacrifices in the Old Testament that took place, that many, the many animals that were slain and the blood was shed, Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or no forgiveness. And that's a principle that's held all the way through the Word of God. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. See, the Lord Jesus Christ had to shed His precious blood upon the cross of Calvary so that you and I could receive forgiveness for our sins if we come by faith to Him. So what we need to do is come in repentance toward God. That's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that we are sinners in the sight of the Lord and then put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and God promises you everlasting life. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that can be yours tonight. You can get right with God by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, after he had uh, offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth, they expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified, or those that are set apart by his blood. Wherefore, the Holy Spirit also is a witness to us for after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now, where remission or forgiveness of uh, these is, there is no more offering for sin. There's no more offering needed. Because the Lord Jesus Christ offered himself once on the cross of Calvary for you and for me. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried. But praise God the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He's a living, loving saviour my friend. He desires to save your soul from a long lost eternity. No need to go down to hell. You can be in heaven at the moment of death through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. His once for all sacrifice upon the cross is all sufficient for all that will call upon him. Having therefore, brethren, boldness, now this is written to Christians, to believers, to the Jewish believers at the time, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the uh, profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, 
not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another as, and so much the more, as ye see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much more, of how much sorer punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Don't forget, this is written to believers, to Christians. How much more fearful is it to fall into the hands of the living God if you are not saved, if you're not one of his children? We need to be born again into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. And you'll receive forgiveness for your sins and everlasting life through faith in the finished work and person of the Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder have you put your faith in Him. But call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated you endured a uh, uh, great fight of afflictions partly whilst you were made a gazing stock both by reproaches and afflictions and partly whilst, whilst ye became companions of them that were so used. For ye have com had compassion on me in my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods knowing in yourselves that ye have a, in heaven a better and an enduring sus substance. I wonder, are you looking forward to going to heaven? See, the only way you can be in heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross. He shed his precious blood for you and for me, in whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins. Cast not away therefore your confidence which hath great recompense of reward, for ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come, will come, and will not tarry. It's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. He's coming again, my friend. He's coming down into the air to take the Christians to be forever with himself. Will you be left behind to go through the tribulation period upon this earth? Seven year tribulation period, terrible time upon the earth of judgment. Last three and a half years is called the Great Tribulation. No need to be left behind in any of those seven years, my friend. You can be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Yes, so the Lord Jesus Christ will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them which who draw back under perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. You see, you've got to mix the word of God. We've got to mix faith with the word of God. In other words, you've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You've got to hear the word of God preached, or you've got to read the word of God, and you've got to see the message that God has for us. The fact that is that we are all sinners in the sight of the Lord when we're born in this world. We need forgiveness for those sins. And the only way is through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend. The once for all sacrifice of Jesus Christ is all sufficient for who? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that can be yours. Tonight, you can get right with God. Your soul can be saved. Why wait any longer? This is too dangerous to trifle around, to muck around with these things. These things are eternal. You know, God is not playing around. He's not joking. 
It's a fearful thing we'd just be ready to fall into the hands of the living God. Yet God will have all men to be saved. God wants you to be in heaven. The only way you can be in heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you come to Christ? Have you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified upon the cross for you and for me? He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So if you come in repentance toward God, that's a change of mind, simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. God wants us to be in heaven. We cannot be there apart from faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's done the work upon the cross that no one else could ever take on. He finished the work that the, the Father sent him to do. He said, I have finished the work that thou gavest me to do. And that was before he actually went to the cross. He's accomplished so much for the, for the pleasure and satisfaction of his Father in heaven. I do always those things he could say that please the Father. None of us can say that. Even Christians, the believers can't say that. The Lord Jesus Christ is absolutely perfect, my friend. He's the divine substitute that took the sinner's place upon the cross of Calvary. So if you come to Christ tonight, your soul will be saved. You put your faith in him. You believe on him. The question was asked a long time ago, what must I do to be saved? The answer was, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Why? Because he's the saviour. There's no one else that can save us. There's no one else to look to. There's no one else to turn to, my friend, apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. And he wants to be your saviour tonight. Will you put your faith in him? Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God has, had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him, that is to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I hope tonight you are seeking the Lord. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ has come seeking for us. But the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. You and I have to realize we are lost. We are heading down to hell because of our sins. But God wants to save you from your sins. God wants to give you forgiveness for your sins. And the only way is through the once for all sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary. And if you come to Christ tonight, your soul will be saved. If you put your faith in him, your soul will be saved. By faith, Enoch was translated, as we said, that he should not see death. It was not found because he had, uh, because God had translated him. Uh, by faith, verse 7, by faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of, of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. You see, the people in Noah's day thought he was an idiot because he was preaching and telling them, telling them that there's a worldwide flood coming, coming and they didn't believe him. Mind you, it hadn't rained on the earth at all up to that point of time. But they should have, they should have believed what uh, Noah said because he was the mouthpiece of God. He was a preacher come from God. He was a preacher of righteousness. And he was telling them, look, get in the ark, otherwise you'll perish. You'll drown in the water. And as, a, as I said, they thought he was an idiot. Maybe you think I'm an idiot. Well, that's okay. You know why? Because I'm concerned about your soul. I don't care what you think about me, it's what you think about Christ that will make all the difference, my friend. 
If you reject the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll end up in hell, and God does not want that for you. God wants you to be saved. And that's why I'm here. I'm concerned about your soul that goes out into eternity, that leaves your body at the moment of death. Where will you be one second after you die? You're either going to be in heaven through faith in Jesus Christ as your Saviour, or you're going to be down in hell because you've rejected or neglected the Lord Jesus Christ who's crying out unto you. Come unto me, all you that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Thanks for the encouragement, sister. Look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. Now, continuing with the message, we're sinners in the sight of the Lord. We need salvation. We need forgiveness. The only way is through the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend. Come to the one who said, I am the way, not a way. The way. He is the exclusive way to heaven. The truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And no, we're not God's children. We've got to be born again into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. What will you do then with Jesus which is called the Christ. Will he be your saviour? Or will he have to be your judge? You will see if you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Have a great night. Remember, it's either heaven or hell, depending on what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ. Come in repentance. Acknowledge you're a sinner before God and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Thank <laughs> you.